G Suite is dead. Long live workspace. You know, my job would be so much easier if people just stopped changing things. But then if you didn't change anything, I wouldn't have as much content to make. So uh, so here we are once again, and this time it is Google who are the culprits. Yes, that's right, in typical Google fashion. Actually, more than Microsoft, actually. They have pulled the rug out from underneath what was formerly known as G Suite, which was Google's business plan, package, product, whatever you want to call it. And instead, they replaced it with a new name. Google Workspace. Now, unlike Microsoft, they've not only renamed G Suite to Workspace, but they've also made significant changes to their plans, which has a dramatic impact on specifically storage and pricing. So for those of you watching this video off the back of my online storage or best photo storage comparison videos, or for those just wondering what Workspace is all about, then stick around. Welcome back to yet another video, and I guess this is actually going to be a what the tech video, because seriously, Google, what the tech? A few days ago in October 2020, Google rebranded the product suite known as G Suite and launched the new service called Google Workspace. To keep this video short and to the point, I'm gonna just cover off what these changes mean, and you can jump straight to each of those sections following the timestamps below this video. And just before we get started, if you are new to watching my videos, please do consider subscribing by clicking the button down below as it really does help me out as someone who's kind of considering doing this as a full-time career slash hobby slash thing. Also, if you do have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I respond to each and every single one of you lovely people. So if I do make a mistake or get something wrong or to ask a question that I haven't answered in this video, then ask them in the comment section below. Let us continue. First up, storage. Why, 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 why Google? You had a fantastic offering of unlimited storage in G Suite for a really, really affordable cost. Admittedly, this was a bit of a hack since Google's official stance was that you needed a minimum of five users for unlimited storage. But from my own experience and pretty much looking around the web, it is obvious that Google never enforced this limit. Well, in Google Workspace, the unlimited storage tier is no longer an option unless you upgrade to their enterprise tiers. Previously on their Google G Suite business plans, you had unlimited storage, which provides immense, immense value in comparison to everything else on the market. So much so that I most definitely crown Google as my favorite online storage provider for both general just cloud storage and photo storage videos. Thanks, Google. This is most definitely something that's caused a bit of an uproar amongst the community, since the initial announcement actually stated that existing G Suite subscriptions wouldn't be affected. Well, it now seems that users are being invited individually to transition and they'll be likely forced to upgrade when that annual G Suite renewal comes along. Now, in terms of your options, you either have 30 gig, two terabytes or five terabytes of storage per user, unless you upgrade to their enterprise tiers, which then obviously means more money, but you do get that unlimited storage on those enterprise tiers. And in terms of pricing, well, not much has actually changed here. G Suite Basic is now called Business Starter, is £4.60 or $6.00. G Suite Business, now called Business Standard, is £9.20 or $12. And the higher tier is now called Business Plus, which is at £13.80 or $18 per user per month. There are also enterprise plans, which pricing isn't actually advertised for, but they're currently $20 per user per month or $30 for Enterprise Plus. And to get those plans, you need to upgrade first to either the Starter, Standard, or Plus tiers, and then you upgrade within your browser. You don't actually need to contact Google. So the questions are, what are these new plans, and how do they differ to what was on offer before? Google states that Workspace introduces three major developments. One, a new brand identity. Two, new ways to get started. And three, a new, deeply integrated user experience. Number one, a new brand identity. Well. Whoop de doo. They do now have you know, new styled logos for many of their apps, which does look clean, but not exactly a reason to tip this whole service up in the air. Number two, new ways to get started. Basically Google's explanation for, we changed all our packages and now you need to sign up for one of our new packages. And then finally, number three, their new deeply integrated user experience. And this is where all of the filling is to that delicious Google sandwich of services. After reading their blog post all about these changes, I have to admit my first thought was, oh cool, they're doing all the stuff that Microsoft's been doing for the last like decade. Congratulations. Features like chat and rooms, which kind of mirror Microsoft Teams in a way where you can message your colleagues and collaborate on documents together. One thing that did actually excite me here was the ability to collaborate with external guests. 
something that Microsoft Teams is notoriously bad for and requires you to essentially sign out from your own company's channel and therefore miss any notifications that come through in the meantime. So this does look like an interesting feature, but I'm also curious to find out how well this works in, in real life because whilst I am an advocate of getting rid of locally installed apps, there are some apps that I'd still like to keep separate. Have you ever been that guy or girl who has tons of tabs open and then have to click through them all to find you've missed a notification from like two hours ago? Some other arguably minor features, of course. You can now preview a linked file without opening up in a new tab. And when you at mention somebody, a smart little chip thing pops up with contact details so you can email them, chat or, or video chat them. You can now also start Google Meet video chats from within Docs, Sheets, Slides, Gmail and Chats. So you don't actually have to leave what you're doing to go and start a video chat and it means you can collaborate on those documents. And all of these, of course, are nice you know, feature additions, but I'm still not seeing anything groundbreaking that really makes sense for the whole rebrand. Once again, I do feel this is just actually the standard practice of Google for just changing their minds constantly on their products, which doesn't really make it easy as a consumer. And with that said, and according to their own blog post, these new features are available to all paying customers of Google Workspace. So I'm taking that that all of the existing G Suite users will not get any of these new features unless they upgrade to one of these new plans. Oh dear God, what have they done? Yet another change to the G Suite slash Google Workspaces update is user numbers. Previously on G Suite, you could subscribe to any tier for an unlimited number of users. In the new Google Workspace, you are now limited to 300 users on their three lower tiers, forcing you to upgrade to their enterprise plans. But at $20 a pop, that is a significant increase in monthly cost for those with over 300 users. For example, for a company with 301 users, that puts you in at nearly $5,000 extra per month if you were previously on the G Suite business plan. Youch! When looking at Google's own G Suite to Google Workspace comparison, things get a little bit more interesting. Or should I say confusing? Or should I say more expensive? <laughs> All of the above. For those of you on the G Suite business plan, which I'd argue is probably the majority of G Suite users for that unlimited storage and all the G Suite features, well, you'll lose the advanced room and resource management feature from all three workspace tiers. Google Vault is now available in only the Business Plus tier, which obviously now costs you more. With Google Drive, you'll be needing to upgrade to the Business Plus tier if you want to completely disable external sharing for all of your staff, you know, for security purposes. And lastly, with all of those features that you lose by switching to Google Workspace, the one feature, other than the ones we've already talked about, the one feature that you actually get by upgrading to Google Workspace that you didn't have before is that you can now save and record Google Meet meetings directly to Drive. Yay? So after all of this, which let's face it, seems pretty negative to me, what does this all mean? Google has essentially, Google, Google, Google has essentially taken features away from people unless they upgrade, paying more to receive those same features back again. And even then, some aren't included until you upgrade to the enterprise tiers, which is a significant increase in price. But if you just stop right here, if you forget all of the history here, put away the emotional breakup as if Google just swiped left on you and take a look at the rest of the fish in the sea. Nobody else is really looking that pretty. If you are looking from the perspective of wanting the best bang for your buck when it comes to online storage, well, Microsoft gives you one terabyte at most. Dropbox and Box.com both offer unlimited storage but at over the double the cost of Google Workspace. Amazon offer up to 30 terabytes of storage, but at a significant price. And well, nobody else seems to really come close still. So it just makes me wonder, did Google realize and just decide to suddenly become a lot more profitable? So after all of this, what does it mean to everybody who has watched my best online storage video and the best cloud storage for photos and videos? Well, for one, Google isn't changing their Google Photos offering that still lets you store unlimited photos and videos, providing they are resized to their standard format that they use. More in the video here if you haven't already seen it. And for me, the Google Workspace tiers still offer good value since it's still the cheapest mainstream provider offering unlimited storage. And I say mainstream provider here as I keep getting comments on all my other videos that's, um, but you didn't look at unlimited data backup my laptop service.com. Yeah, because I've never heard of it before and I wouldn't trust my data to a service I've never heard of before. Anyway, I digress. What was I talking about? For pure storage, then I'd still go with Google 
perhaps rather than just jumping straight in at the deep end with the unlimited storage, look at how much data you actually have and then start with the tier that matches those needs. Then as your data grows, then you can just upgrade. Something just worth mentioning here because I'll get shot down by all the Google people that watch these videos. The amount of storage space you get in your Google Drive. If you are using things like Google Sheets, Google Docs, and any Google format files, they do not consume space in your Google Drive. I can't imagine Microsoft doing that with their OneDrive, can you? Word documents, Excel documents, PowerPoint presentations, Outlook data, all that kind of stuff. Nah, it's fine. For those wanting the best all around solution for their business in terms of, you know, applications and features and all that kind of stuff, it's difficult, nigh and impossible to call that between Office 365 and Google. Both have their strengths, both have their weaknesses, and both can really make it or break it for your business if you don't have a good enough IT support provider that looks after you. A video which will be coming soon, and once I've done that, I'll be linking it in the description below and up there in the cards too. If you do have any comments or questions, drop them in the comments below this video. I do respond to each and every single person who asks me a question. If I've not covered something, tell me I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, but just be nice about it, please. Okay, thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, of course, to like the video if you did. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the bell icon to be notified when future videos are posted. And I'll see you in the comments. Thank you. Bye-bye.